a long time ago. I at that time was full-time military at the Elgin Armory preparing the company for federalization in February. The state police, who had an office in the front of the armory, came to my office and informed me that a military aircraft had fallen somewhere over east or west of Illinois Park School. They didn't know exactly where it was at. So I got my armor, who was also full-time. We put our PM, uh, P, uh, our military police armbands on. We put our 45 loaded on our belts, jumped in a Jeep. It was a beautiful day. And we drove out and we could see the smoke coming up as we came out on Wing Street. McLean Boulevard ended before the railroad tracks. And this was all cornfield, this whole area. And we're when you come in and you go to Scott Drive, there's that rise. He hit on the other side of that rise. Purportedly, here is the story of why that happened. <clears throat> he was a training pilot flying out of O'Hare Air Force base, which at that time was under the military, and he had a, a wingman who was a student instrument flying, student flying as his wingman. They were at about 470 miles an hour above the overcast. You couldn't see the ground. He said to his wingman, I'm going down to see how low this goes. So he drops down, doesn't reduce his speed, still 470 miles an hour, in an F-86 jet. And all of a sudden he says, oh my God. When he finally came out, but he was too low, he couldn't pull up. But at that same time, he saw school children in the Illinois Park School playground. He said, I'm going to fly it in because of the kids. That act, in itself said that this man was a hero. He could have survived maybe if he had ejected as he had thought he would do. The parachute would have slowed him down. But how much he, we don't know. It was unbelievable. So he rode the plane down and it smashed over the rides. Broke apart pieces all over, all the way up to the crick line here. The armorer and myself, we, here, we were here to secure the area until somebody with authority arrived. 
The Elgin, it was outside of Elgin, this was Kane County. And Kane County said, well, it's going to be about 20 minutes before we can get our car there. So, okay, we stood around in case anybody showed up, and I, I don't recall seeing anybody. Some, of the, some people have reported that they did see it, but uh, they didn't show up and they're not here. Once Kane County arrived, we turned it over to them. We went back to the armory. I forgot all about it. Completely wiped it out of my mind. Until 19, or until 2011, my wife and daughter talked me into coming with them to look at a house that they would like to get. They brought me out here to Scott Drive. We turned in on Royal Boulevard at that time now, which was not here. And I said, oh my God, this is where that Air Force pilot crashed. And I related to him about the story. And we subsequently did buy the house. We would live on Scott Drive. But in doing that, and seeing this, it, it just drove, drove my mind. I, said, I, I know this place. It was not long after that, maybe a couple of years, Al Grantham, is Al here? Al Grantham is a retired policeman. He's also very ill. Uh, came to my office at the Legion at the time I was the adjutant and handed me this packet of all this information on Captain Chowick. He said, I want you to look this over. He said, I think the American Legion should do something about it. I looked it over. I agreed. I took it to the exec committee at the post. They agreed. We took it to the floor and they agreed with the proviso that it be self-funding. It would not cost the post any direct money. This was agreed. At that moment, the program was going to go. Now we had to start building a package of when we could do this. We chose to do it that year in November on the 14th or the 13th of November and we started working on it looking for funding I sent a general letter out to all of our members of the Air Force who belong to the Air Force and they belong to the American Legion Post 57 we had a meeting I laid out the program and the package 
they said they would fund it. We had a one major contributor. And we put together enough information and enough money to go ahead and order the items that would be needed to do this project. The guesstimate was somewhere around six to seven thousand dollars. I passed this information out to all of these Air Force veterans. I think there was 28 there. I received a check for a very large amount of money, which guaranteed us that we could go ahead and start it, along with all the other contributors. At this time, I would like to introduce the widow of our major contributor, Mrs. Elizabeth Bowen.